very long introduction, and most of it you could find on the internet. Um, so I'll just uh, I'll mention though, just a, a few things that um, Art is best known for the Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novels Mouse and Mouse 2, which were later collected as the complete mouse. And indeed, it is Mouse that established the graphic novel form and remains today its high watermark. He's also the author of Meta Mouse, uh, Breakdowns, Portrait of the Artist as a Young, <coughs> um, and In the Shadow of No Towers. And he's uh, created some of the most memorable covers for The New Yorker and uh, co edited the influential comics magazine Raw with his wife, uh, Francoise Mouly. And let's see, I'm going to make this a lot shorter than I had it. Pretty much a major mark and a wide variety of media, including children's books, book and magazine design, illustration, bubblegum cards, lithography, modern dance, and stained glass. Um, and his newest book is uh, Co-Mix, so we're going to talk about that. And here's some stuff that you won't find on a Google search, necessarily. Um, I would say Art has the most voracious curiosity of anyone I've ever met, and the nimblest and most expansive mind. He connects ideas and then upends and rearranges them before you finish laughing at the last joke that he's told, the one that probably flew over your head. Um, he's the kind of artist, mentor, and friend who, with great spirit and forthrightness, will generously give you his time, attention, consideration, encouragement, reassurance, and guidance. It's not for everybody, just for either. Yeah. <laughs> and also, he'll share cartooning tips. Food. So, please, uh, welcome, Art. I don't have to live up to this to be so witty that nobody understands anything I say, nor do I intend to do any modern dancing on the stage. Just, uh, just, making, just being invited into a category that I have no business entering into, or preparing a choreography that ends up being a moving comic strip. Yeah, it's like a true fight for annual right of spring dance. Anyway. Um, well, um, just like I had to kind of shorten this long thing I wrote, I think I'm just going to have a conversation instead of reading these long and pretentious questions. <laughs> right. um, so it seems like the three of your recent books that you've done, uh, Breakdowns and uh, well, Comics and uh, Meta Mouse, sort of form a trilogy. I don't know if you agree with that. Theory. It's a trilogy or an epitaph. It's either epitaph or trilogy, I'm not sure which. It's, uh, I got caught in something that I now call the Great Retrospection, like the Great Depression or something, and it was inch by inch wandering into this uh, thing that I didn't know would become like a five or six year project, um, and it was just uh, torture. Uh, it was, uh, the first thing was I had a two book contract, one just seemed to make sense, like, oh, do a book about mouse because people keep asking for mouse three, and you're never going to do that, so do this. And it became a two-book contract with my first uh, anthology of comics from the underground days, Breakdowns, where I turned that into a much bigger project by doing this introduction that has as many panels as the book it introduces, uh, and then has, that was to make it simpler for people, and then a postscript that explains the introduction to that work. So I turned it into just too complicated. Uh, and then that, uh, that was supposed to be the second book, and I did it first because Meta Mouse, I knew it was going to be trouble. I didn't know how much until I actually got to number two of these three things. At which point, um, I realized that when I'd done now, it's like I developed all these kind of, what it's called like uh, professional deformations, you know, how like surgeons can go in and cut people up and go, and uh, wonder what's for lunch, you know. Uh, and, and like, I had to develop those to do now, I'd forgotten just how difficult it was to be able to uh, become uh, Callous, literally, to become distant from so it's like it's just material. It's how does one best present material as opposed to like I think I'll go to my studio today and fall on for a crime and stay devastated for a while. Um, and and Meta Mouse was that. It was uh, the first month and a half I was shocked at what what, what it involved. It was really just coming in, okay, time to stop crying, go out and have coffee, come back and do some more. Um, so at, when I was finishing Meta Mouse, which ended up being a few year sort of project. Right near the end is when I got invited by Angle Lamb at this comics festival to be their president in 2011 now, I guess. Uh, and at first it was, oh, how nice of them. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, oh my god, this is terrible news. Uh, um, as a fellow anhedonic cartoonist, 
I'm sure I know exactly what that means, it was terrible news. What it was was, see, Angoulême is sort of the equivalent of the Frankfurt Book Fair of the Cannes Film Festival in France for comics. And it, uh, everything that happens surrounding the festival is announced on television, there's live presentations of awards, as opposed to ponies or something. The real America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, at first it was like, wait a minute. Uh, I guess that's nice of them, but it's like either 20 years too late or 20 years too soon. I want to do this now. And the worst of it was the way I was asked, which is, I get an email that says, could you call uh, this number in France tomorrow at whatever it was, 2 p.m. Uh, so to say thank you to Frederick Mitterrand, the Minister of Culture, for making you the president of the but he'll be receiving you in a tent with 2,000 people. Um, and I kept trying to reach the people for the rest of the time between getting an email on 2 p.m. the next day to say, could you reconsider this? Because uh, um, my wife, Francoise, is, is way um, um, savvier about this. I mean, I, you know, I would have named President Bangalore and she's mad! You know? uh, uh, and for the second I was insulted, then we slowed down and thought about it. I said, you're right. Uh, and for one thing, Trump had been the last American president, and there had only been Eisner, and I mean, otherwise it's a very provincial event, so it's French artists. And Crumb was such a disaster that uh, they promised never to give it to another American, so I kind of felt betrayed when they offered it to me. I mean, he showed up for one afternoon, he was a kid in the green room, and they said, uh, Le Mans is here, will we talk to them? Nah. Uh, 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 Channel Bruce is here. Uh, and so he stayed for the afternoon, and then he just went record hunting for the rest of the week in <laughs> small villages in France. Um, so the reason, oh, I'm sorry, I got to lose track. The reason that this was so hard, and this is what you were calling a trilogy, um, is that I was really finished retrospecting the I thought, this is good. I, whatever it is that I've done, I made some kind of package about it. You've had, you had some very nice way of phrasing it in, uh, your aesthetics and memoir book where you did something similar looking back over what you've done and which was nothing. Well, <laughs> that's how it feels for me also, but it's not a lot of And you, on the other hand, are a bastion of sanity. That's why you're so supportive. Um, <laughs> uh, but the thing, the thing was just that uh, this event came with the demand for a retrospective art show. And I was really finished looking back. I thought Meta Mouse was like, okay, that's done. There's nothing else I can offer now. So if the mouse doesn't stop chasing me, I can at least show my donor card I gave. There's nothing else I can do for the mouse. Um, and so now I was being dragged into a retrospective that I really didn't want. I said, look, I, I couldn't. Whoa, so they call up. They, they have me call up. I'm put onto the stage, and I, I didn't know how to say, look, I can't do this if it comes with a retrospective, because I thought it would be like loudish. It would be like, you know, freedom fries or something. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but so I said this, but we have to talk after. And then as soon as I got him on the phone after, I said, I just, look, I'll come. I can do all this, but I can't possibly do a retrospective show. It's just too much. And then they kept at me until I found a way I would do it. Because I said, if my friend Rina Matodi was a great gallery in France, what artist uh, um, uh, Lorenzo Matodi is the curator, I trust her with my life, so I'll trust her with my work. She can figure it out. She's smart. Um, and then, if you can get it to be somewhere other than a small village in Angolino that has 400,000 people in it for four days and then nobody in it for another four months, maybe I can figure out a way that's rational to do this. So then they come back and said, how about if it's at the Ponte de Lourdes? All right, I think I can handle this. Uh, um, now it's worth doing. So then it became a tour, which is now ultimately coming uh, to New York after finishing in Vancouver this weekend. Um, but it was really terrible to go back and have, have my nose ground into everything I hadn't looked at up to that point in order to make it happen yet again. So this constant like being forced back into what I did and didn't do. The only thing I can say in my behalf is it really mostly feels like, Jesus, you know, around this long, this is what you did. The only advantage is if you're around long enough, you look prolific because there are many great artists who die at 30. And uh, they have a body of work. So if you get to be like this long, then it feels like a body of work. Something. Would you say a uh, mix was maybe the least painful for you? Well, it was because I had a lot of support system. I had the person curating the show, who was great, and then I had, uh, they didn't decide to do a catalog in France until it was just about one month before the composition aspect of the world. And, and all of a sudden, it was, let's put out a book. Um, and so I had a, a friend who's a designer in France, uh, um, um, 
uh, with Du Jiu, who I worked for a very long time, I trust him. And I have an editor in France who just said, let's just put it together. So all I can do is provide information and images, and then something made me uncomfortable with it. And for a book put out in Hong it was very impressive. Uh, but it really was like the beta version of a book, which I thought was fine. It was just a, an extended catalog. Except that when Drawn and Quarterly got involved, they decided to make it into actually a book worth having. So it's now been doubled in size, expanded, but again with um, every possible support system, as opposed to me micromanaging every eighth of an inch that's coming for me. I think you've said that I'm also a little bit more like that, this kind of go for you, not micromanaging. Yeah, when you did your book, do you do all of the in-design work? I, I, uh, I mocked up every page for the designer, and then she followed most of it, except for the really bad ideas I had. <laughs> That's so why I like having another set of eyes sometimes, because I, I need to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying.